So what is motion blur? Even though it has the word blur in it, the lens is actually not responsible for motion blur. Motion blur happens during when the shutter stays open for a long time, and then the sensor gets exposed to the movement that was captured within that time frame, which then results into light streaks, or light smears. The cool thing about motion blur is that it has a really strong effect on the feel of your film. A very fast shutter speed will make sure that there is very little motion blur. Depending on your situation, you might want to use a lot of motion blur to emphasize the speed of your scene, or you would like to use motion blur in an artistic way to really smear out your image and create an artistic effect. The idea is that you would use the 180 degree shutter rule, which would give you what's considered cinematic motion blur. It states that you should keep your shutter open for twice as long as the frame rate of your video. If you're shooting 24, have your shutter at 1 over 48. If you're shooting 25 frames per second, have your shutter at 1 over 50. Alright, we're inside of Cinema 4D. Let's quickly leave the camera and show you around. We have a big wall in the background, we have some VDB files over here, we have a bunch of lights and moving characters. Let's quickly turn off all these VDBs because it's really bogging down my computer. And also, I'm going to be speeding up most of this footage, otherwise it's going to be unbearable to watch. Each of the Deli Platter soldiers has a different Mixamo animation applied to them. It's just enough frames as we need, and it's just for the motion that we're looking for in this shot. Now, as we've turned off the VDB explosions in the back, I actually want to maintain that silhouette effect for this example. So I'm adding a really big area light in the background. I have all the motion blur settings turned off right now. We just have a really sharp image of all our characters in a hero pose. If I select my Corona camera tag, you'll see I have an ISO of 200, a shutter speed of 1 over 30, and a f-stop of 7.1 which if we know how shutter speed works, 1 over 30 is a pretty long shutter speed, so be expecting long blurry streaks. And then go into your camera post-processing. If you go all the way down, you'll see there's a section called motion blur, and it has three options there. There's enable camera motion blur, enable object motion blur, and use the shutter curve. In this situation, our camera is not moving, so we're going to be enabling objects. Nothing is happening at first, and that's probably because my computer is too weak, so it needs a refresh. And as you can see, we have a bit of motion blur. The image also became darker because the shutter is now closing faster, so there's less time for light that comes in. I'm maintaining the f-stop at 7.1 because I like the depth of field that we're getting from the aperture. So I'm actually going to be compensating by changing the ISO. Let's change the shutter speed to 1 over 250, and increase the ISO to 400. And there you go. As you can see, there is almost no motion blur in the image right now. The opposite would be true if we were to bring the ISO down to 20 and the shutter speed to one over four seconds. You can see there is the entire motion path. There's four seconds of motion being captured in one frame. I'm not sure how long it takes for motion blur to render in either GPU renderers or real-time renderers, so please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to learn more about that. But there's one more thing you can do to make it extra realistic, and that is using shutter curves. Now the next thing you can do is go into your shutter curve, and if you turn it on, by default, nothing will change with your render. And as you can see on the image, each blur streak is evenly distributed. If we right-click change the spline type to be linear and bring this one down, what it will do now is the shutter will slowly, as the motion progresses, open more. What that means is that we will have less motion blur at the beginning of a motion, and we will have motion blur by the end of the motion. And if we compare this one to the previous one, you can immediately see there's an offset in all the vector paths. Let's show you what would happen in the opposite situation if we first have our shutter open and then we slowly close it as the motion goes by. And there you go, you can immediately see in the viewport what it does. It changes the entire hierarchy of the motion path. Now each motion streak starts off being very blurry and slowly ends being sharper.
Now, if you're looking for a more traditional cinematic motion blur, what I would recommend you to do is to change your spline type to be cubic and then to have a curve similar to this, one that's closed in the beginning, opened for the largest chunk of the middle section of the motion and then slowly fades off by the end and closes back down. Now the section that is longest in motion is going to have the most motion blur, while the beginning and the endings of your motion path are going to be slowly lowering in intensity. You can also go absolutely crazy and just change every value in your shutter curve to be something more abstract. For example, in this case, where we have a closed shutter that then jumps up and then closes back down and then jumps up again. And that way you can create a ghosting effect, which has all of these jittery lines over your blur. Cool. Now let's do one more thing, which is try to use camera motion blur. I'm placing a few keyframes here. I'm just doing something very extreme. And if I turn on camera motion blur, and I make that render, here you go. You can see that the same motion the characters had is now being overlaid by these long streaks of the camera pushing through this room. It looks completely abstract, there's barely anything we can tell from it. But if we bring down the shutter to 1 over 60, there you go, that's your image again. And if you were to compare the extremely abstract one to this one, you can still see the general direction of each vector path. And then after that, I just made my own camera the way that I liked it. I added the VDB explosions, added a bit of a rim light to the character on the left to separate him from the background. More explosions. There you go. Now you have your real silhouettes going on. And then finally, I added a bit of a dust VDB to kind of break everything up and make it one cohesive image. And that's it. That's this first introduction into motion blur, into using shutter curves inside of Chaos Corona, and how you can sculpt your own motion blur to give the cinematic effect that you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for sticking around with Blau Films during this long time that we've been off. I'm happy to be back to YouTube. I'm happy to be making videos again. Be sure to subscribe if you're new here. We are an IP development company. We're working on our own projects. We're sharing as much as we can of our process and sharing the assets and developments. So come along on the journey. It's going to be exciting. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.